even more so. Liquid, they look so dangerous in the last season. We'll see if they've managed to keep that going throughout the break and are going to be ready for this one. They're on the T side with G2 on the CT side. Looks like a call right out of spawn towards the B bomb site in this pistol. Just pick a strat out of the book and go for it. Hooksy's here with Hunter on catwalk in defense. Rotation is a long way off. It is just these two players to defend against everything. Well, the pressure is absolutely on. Hooksy's still running for it. Hunter, though, good headshot and an even better follow up, taking down Nitro and Neff and putting the bomb on the ground so everyone can start to rotate over Really, She's got the one kill. Yekendar set here top mid. <laughs> he is also on his own. They're in a little bit of trouble here, Liquid. Still no bomb plant happening. They haven't even really recovered the bomb yet. The liege back here by the bench, and that P250 is at least something that they have to respect, or maybe they don't. JKS takes one, and a follow-up on OC, and they close out the round very well. That round feels over when Hunter gets that double kill, just stepped in front of the smoke. You can see the Liquid players didn't even really think about that position as a point of danger. They're expecting that smoke to block everything off, and he just steps in front of it, so a little too deep. And Hunter's able to take advantage of the double kill and shut down all the aggression. If you're not able to wrap around that bomb site, you can see that's the idea from Liquid, and that's the idea we see frequently at those B hits. If you can't actually turn that corner and wrap around to clear out those pillars, you're in for some trouble. JKS is such a... I actually don't know what kind of story I even want us to try and tell with, with JKS at this point in time, because when he was on Complexity, there was... For me, he was he was sort of almost representing a kind of player that would almost always be forgotten when talking about really great riflers. And then I don't think he ever really got a chance to show any of it in complexity. And then, you know, he went off the map entirely for a real long time with yep. no team to play in at all. And then now back into it, you wonder, could he recover it? Because if you've missed the, the really great era of JKS before complexity probably even... Renegades, it, Hundred Thieves. It really was yeah. crazy to see. Like, he really has a high ceiling, but... It's been gone for a while. Yeah, I think I think part of the the weird thing for me with JKS's career and like a big picture is I always like kind of had him in you know maybe this is this is probably more my mistake but I always kind of compared him to like where he needed to be like a, a kind of superstar for the old Australian teams and when you kind of sure. have those expectations he's always falling short and I think obviously uh, he shows just how much he can deliver as kind of a, a piece of the team and not necessarily having to be the center point the focal point. Yeah, just. Step up. Ooh, nice little lineup there. They do only have Glocks and no armor, so it doesn't really necessarily make a big difference. But, um, yeah, you'd l I just want to see some s a steady output from JKS, right? So, some someone to be relied upon to to just do the, the average working around, and then we can we can build from there. I feel like that would be a good start. And he's going to have his games, too. He's going to have his games where he pops off. 2 nothing for G2 early. Second round, no issues, no stress, no pressure, no dramas. That's what you want to see. Liquid, though. Quickly back in it with rifles. They picked up all AKs and a fair bit of grenades to follow it up. Right now, in the starting of the third round, they have two kills across the entire team. It's not the end of the world, but means G2 are happy about the money at least. There's a decent nade right there. Tagging up Nitro. And he's going to keep going. Runs into the shot there. JKS, well aware of what could be happening. That will slow them down quite a bit. A little bit of lack of cohesion on this G2 side. Three players at this very same corner. All the, you know, is superficial damage from the grenade. Not too much to worry about, but huddled up for a moment. And as they try and change those positions and get out of that clump, Naf is able to take advantage. That was a friendly nade, right? I'm on a G2? On to... Yeah, I think it was. Oh, okay. I want to say that it was. Maybe... I some... think in my head I was hoping it was a T-side nade. That would make more sense, but I... <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy. Possible. Well, now you're making me feel crazy, so thanks for that. <laughs> Yekandar eats a dink. Elijah is going to pop up from underpass, and JKS is spot on. That's a job well done. Elige out of the round. Someone you really want to shut down early. If we're to assume that his performances from the last season will continue to this one, getting him out of any round is going to be important. Maybe especially on a map like Mirage, where he seems to be doing pretty well. Three versus four at the moment at about 30 seconds. And they're all grouped up in the middle looking for an opening, which they're not currently getting. G2 are a little bit further back. It's hard to find them at the moment. JKS going to swing in for the fight. It's a really good triple that he's building in this round. So far, pretty much won it on his own. Manisi will come in the headshot and time to just make it out if you're yet can Can't even escape. Nico is going to come for the jump and... Yeah. Good, strong claps. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thanks for that. Thanks for leading me right into it. Yeah, it was a team nade. <laughs> You're not crazy. It was me that was crazy the whole time. So I've been saying this, Jason, for, for years. <laughs> <laughs> Three to nothing. Pistols and armor picked up for Team Liquid. Oh, those camera shots at the end are always with the audio is great. I'm happy we have them. Random pistols being picked up here on the liquid side. But it's a, it's a slow start. And the problem is that you don't have space for that in best of ones. Not that much anyway. So I'm not saying that liquid is necessarily feeling pressured yet, but eventually they're going to start to feel like they need to do a little bit more. Still not even the AWP picked up on Monacy. Hasn't lost the M4, so hasn't really needed to, but that's something else to think about. Although, I actually think, again, if you get like an, a Monacy OC matchup, that's going to be hard for me to pick who's winning that. Yeah, that'd be fun. I mean, both of them offers, I think, too. I mean, OC certainly proved, you know, a couple of times that he's very, very proficient with the rifle. Monacy's going to be as well. Not just one trick ponies. Nico is on the hunt. Doesn't want to give up a rifle by peeking in. Waiting for Hunter to get over towards Catwalk. If Hunter can draw some contact, yeah, Nico's going to peek out just like this. Missed his opportunity, but they have all the information. Yekandar with a stunner on a JKS. Challenging into the A bomb site. However, the bomb is dropped at the base of the connector stairs. And Nico is going to clean things up nice and easy. More strong claps. Yeah, foundation of any good. Counter-Strike team. That's why Dexter was brought into OG. <laughs> Those strong claps. High fives. I wonder if eventually you do, your hands just become numb. And it's like, Forms calluses yeah. from all the high fives. <laughs> just, or like one of those, you know, construction workers who's been spending too much time on the on the power tools. So yeah. can't feel anything. Fifth round is coming up. We've got OZ on the AWB. We've got Monacy as well. So a lot, some upgrades coming through. And Liquid have yet to find their first round. Let's see if this is going to be it. Monacy doing a little bit of parkour on top of the scaffolding, but he's going to be missing the shot. So could have been dangerous. That one for OC probably could have connected as well. Both AWPers giving away maybe some potentials for some openings here, but didn't really, uh, didn't connect. Bomb dropped pretty far back in the B hallways. Oh, nice shot from Elise jumping up on the bench. Hunter's caught. Nico and JKS going to start trying to get aggressive and connect her to trade it out. They do have a player in window. That's Monacy, but he smoked off yet again. So that little trap, that little piece of aggression they were trying to set up is neutralized. No real presence at the A bomb site. Everyone's focused on mid. Even Hooksy being pushed up on catwalk. Yekendor and Elise can open up middle. Crack it open. Now the big hit, B hit needs to come. And Monacy's going to be here with the AWP. Yeah, maybe just in time. Oh, he's pushed in. This is so dangerous. He's all in on this defense. And he's going to get side swiped by Naf. A nice find. And a 40 second bomb plant here. So going to have plenty of time for it. Not worried about that catwalk either. Two versus three. And questionable, yeah, G2, even with the money in the bank, not really worth going for. Yeah, Monacy just missed the timing by one second. He's open, he's going to beat them in, and he just obviously never saw that player get out and wrapping around the bomb site. So, good job from Team Liquid. Good work from Elysian, Yekandar, and Mid. A kill each. And that gives them the information. Remember, they'd already killed Hunter. That was the shot. And then Yekandar grabs Hooksy. Those are the two B players. So immediately the information is passed over to Team Liquid. Look, bomb site's clear. The player you're going to have to contend with is the rotator. And, you know, one of those kills even from Nico happens right through the smoke, so that, that's probably what even gave them close to a chance to, to send Monacy over there, otherwise they probably would have given it up already. Ooh, all right. Liquid are on the board. And that's that was about time. Starting to fall, drift a little bit further behind. Yeah, don't want to play from a hole, so this at least gives them some breathing room. Ice cold. Sixth round coming up. Double up now. Hooksy with the other one. Maybe a little bit unexpected. Yeah, I'd say so. It's a bold decision. Let's see how it works out. Nico's jumped out a window. He's got a smoke in the underpass. He's going to challenge. He goes down to Yekandar. Good entrance provided. Good first kill. Good second kill. A better second kill from Yekandar. Something that I really associate with Yekindar's style is the confidence behind every single fight that he takes. So impressive to watch. Hooksy's over here. 
great angle, obviously, with the AWP. It'll be really, really hard to check coming in from the T side. And if you do flash it out, then you're also kind of signaling that you're taking the hallway. So it doesn't always work out that way either. Jake has to take down Naf. That's a good fight to win. That's a tough fight considering the way Naf was playing it. And now Liquid's going to go right at the double op setup. This is perfect. Modesty's here on Catwalk. First kill comes out from Hooksy. Smoking enough to buy a little bit more space, but they don't know about that second AWP. And Elise, he jumps right into it. And this is a great crossfire, though. Yeah, and, uh, how does he come up with that kill? I don't even know. Hooksy missing the flick and lucky to be alive, it seems. Two versus two. And now 35 seconds making his way in JKS, trying to get there in time. But the bomb is at the very least going to be planted liquid. I can't believe they even get this far. Yekinda yeah, very low behind that nade. OC with a lot of health and still with that AWP trained on the market. Might have a chance here. Hooksy's going to walk into it. The gun barrel's going to be showing if he's not careful. Just a little bit slow. And Hooksy goes down. JKS now. Not a lot of health. And he's already been found out. Trying to even get the pre-fire. But there's no reason for them to fight him right now. They can wait. He has to get on there and try and get that defuse. And they're being very patient on the liquid side. I love everything about this. That bomb is so far ticked at this here. And JKS, he finds a headshot. But Jekendam, there's a whole bomb side to look at. And he's going to end up winning it. Quad kill at the end. What a magical round. Yeah, the 1v1 clutch is always unlikely for JKS in that situation. So we'll throw that kill out the window for Jekendam. The other three are all high impact. The first two kills clearing out the aggression in mid from Nico and Hunter and obviously that shot on Monacy saves the day because you're exactly right that's a tough double up setup to break into as four players coming through the B halls this is magnificent so quick Monacy couldn't even react yeah it looked like it should have worked um, but yeah that's a certainly a huge economic loss for the side of G2 still with money to buy though just really labored. Famas on Monacy, three M4s and an SMG on Hooksy. And this time, no presence in middle or connector for G2. A much more passive defense sunk back into the bomb sites. Nico and Monacy playing for an execute. And maybe lost a little bit in the last round is the fact that JKS actually went and took that fight in the A Palace. He's currently 8-2 and two right now. So, I mean, if he can be relied upon to win those kind of fights kind of on his own, that is massive. That's the kind of thing that can maybe get you back into a, a round like it almost did. Yeah, Naf's very good in that position as well. So that's going to be a tough duel between those two throughout the game. Former teammates as well, if you'll remember. Oh, yeah. Elige smoking it off and trying to make sure that he could uh, get a little bit of control. <laughs> a monstrous nade landing at his feet. And you can start beating the smoke on the other side. That might be a little bit of a shock inside of the bomb side. They might not be ready quite for it. Hunter is... Taking down Yekinda. That's a nice little uh, pick off there. Grenade behind him. But OC is going to shoot him in the back instead. And all the pressure on this MP9. One versus three in the bomb side, And no chance for Hooksy to defend that one. And due to the style of Team Liquid, that was kind of quiet walking through the catwalk smoke and progressing towards the bomb site. There's no indication it's coming. So no chance for any of the A players to shift over and rotate and be nearby to kind of help hold on to the site. Good kill for OC getting aggressive as Hunter's attention is towards the halls. And that M SMG had no chance from Hooksy. Okay, you never really feel good about that when uh, when the pressure is on. A little bit different if he had some backup that could draw some of the attention away, but that had already been wiped out. Liquid, third round. This is a good recovery. Um, I was getting a little bit nervous because I think I picked... Uh, did you, I did the predictions over at Blast on TV. And I, um, I picked Liquid to go out first in this group. Okay. So... You're you're real. You're huffing on that copium real hard. I'm double tripling down. Yeah. There's no more jet lag for the NA teams. It's they've they've made their way past that. They've become That's, immune. Yeah. It's the Euros who use it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe because they don't really have to like necessarily fly that far. But maybe it's like like motion sickness. Like they're in the car. Or <laughs> like it's yeah. Tough, you know. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> A little case of vertigo. Exactly. Oh, man. They keep some rifles alive on the G2 side, so they can fight back in this one. But it's a slow but pretty steady recovery from Liquid at the moment. Ooh, Liege, it? wow, just walks right out there. This is cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, 
We're in the bomb site, boys. And this this isn't a bad call whatsoever when you think of all the attention that G2 has put towards connector and towards middle. The problem now is there's really only like kind of three players at this bomb site for liquid. Nitro's a little bit disconnected underpass. Yekandar's gonna have to make a decision. Those two have to coordinate which one's gonna lurk, which one's gonna stick around, which one might have to get aggressive. Because G2 actually has power of bodies at this bomb site, but just I mean, a slow, creeping, crawling hit into the A site doesn't let them coordinate anything. Really good call from Liquid. Yeah, that's amazing to see. Nico trying to play on top of the smoke, and he's getting a little bit of naff. Still feels like this is an impossible retake, although two of the members of Liquid are quite far away, so I guess if they're really quick with it, maybe G2 could do something there. Sit in the headshot, and now they need to get everyone here. OC is covering this deep line in towards jungle, so he's going to know everything. Nice shot onto Monacy, and I think they still have a pretty good chance of it here. No smoke on top of the bomb, no kit either, so it's a real long time before they get close to this defuse. Ten seconds, as you could tell, and they're getting picked up as well. The kid are no trouble fighting this one, and he, they're going to be able to save the day, but... For a minute there, if there had been a smoke in a kit, that could have been a really dangerous round. Yeah, that, that round worked out perfectly for Liquid. The call into that defense was was magnificent. That was exactly what you would have wanted making that call as a strategy. And, and I mean, you can see how it might have been a little bit more difficult if there was someone actually committed to the A bomb site to be able to slow that down, maybe grab one kill, and then maybe force Yekandar and Nitro into plays in mid before they really want to. But all around, well put together round from Liquid. Four in a row. Yeah, they're bringing it back. That naked walkout onto the uh, out of the A palace is just. On the one hand, it looks it looks so silly, but it can be absolutely devastating if you're down there because you you're so used to there being you know flashes like this one to set it up and for someone to peek a little bit more. But I mean, just look at look at how it was played. Uh, G2 had the bodies there, but they never had the information of how to put them into play exactly. It's you know you get out, you have such a huge advantage, especially in terms of information. This time, Hooksy and JKS firmly in the bomb site with Nico close by. Hooksy putting himself in that sandwich position, which, with two Molotovs, maybe not a high chance that it gets burned out, but it could be. And that's an awkward way to lose a, an early defender in uh, the A bomb site. Yeah, especially with Naf up in halls. If Nitro is a Molotov out that cubby position, Naf can actually peek out. He's going to use it. For Dark, no one's underneath balcony. JKS and Hooksy with a bit of a crossfire set up. Nap needs to be stopped before he commits, and Hooksy's not peeking. Hooksy's not peeking whatsoever, and JKS is dropped stone cold inside the site. Hooksy now activated, but it might be too late. He cannot get the second. Yeah, and just as that was happening, they also made their way up the connector behind, so... I don't know, maybe if that connected position could have been defended, Hooksy could have had more of a, more of a chance to take that fight, but they were all around him, no matter what, there. Monacy gonna have to try and save the AWP, but it's another great round for Liquid. What a what an impactful return that we're seeing. And this these past two rounds are kind of the stylistic changes that we mentioned of Team Liquid historically since Yekandar's been brought in. These are kind of rounds that you wouldn't normally see Liquid calling in previous iterations at all. Oh, it's something. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's working out well for them though. Monacy just trying to save the AWP, but they're all on top of him, and they should be able to find it. Elige. We'll get the closing kill, and this is starting to look like a really great first half for them. That one's a hard crossfire to kind of set up, because if you're hooked, so you don't want to be peeking towards holes the entire time, but maybe jiggle peeking it either way. JKS cannot go down that easy without, without any kind of indication of what's coming. Yeah, because, I mean, we just mentioned the Molotovs, right? If you're, if you're Hooksy and you stay too far out, maybe you just invite the Molotov right away, and they're like, oh, well, we spotted them already. So. Or, or if you jiggle and take a fight and don't get the kill, then you definitely know the Molotovs coming in after that, so... Yeah, just a setup that did not pan out whatsoever for G2. Liquid on fire. Yeah. <laughs> physics problem here that you're uh, contemplating There's some on. gasoline layered on top. There we go. Yeah, oil spill. I've seen a few of those, my little oopsies. I've seen Free Willy. <laughs> Wanna see. Caught. Night Nico right afterwards. Nitro able to pick that one up. Second kill of the game for Nitro. So he's been having a little bit of a qu more quiet time, but his team is winning. He's making all the right calls, captaining them into uh, to a lead. So I don't know if I can complain even too much about that. Five versus three at the moment. He's still doing a bit of damage. Oh, OC Jesus. nearly shot by a teammate. Uh, got shot by a teammate. Ooh, there's the play, and Elysia's still in middle. 
He's found that kill. All five players from Team Liquid alive until Nitro goes down here to Hooksy's Deagle. Left with one HP. It's going to be a sixth round for Team Liquid. They take a two-round lead. Ooh, yeah. Not going to be able to find another one. There's a lot of damage in that round. Could have been nice with another couple of kills there for the, for the CT side, but they weren't able to. So more money being built on the Liquid side. Slowly but surely. Nico. Curious to see if we could get him activated into uh, to some of these rounds. I mean, I, th I feel like it's almost no bad Nico games anymore. And he is 9 to 4, so I'm not necessarily saying this is this is one of them either, but right now would be a good time for him to to get a couple of quick kills, get his team back on track. Modesty instead. Good pick off on Nafly. That's what we wanted, or that's what G2's wanted to see more of, is those plays with the AWP early on in rounds to give you a man advantage. Deep flashbang almost gave Nico a half second for a clean fight against Yekendar, but didn't swing and commit. Five on four. Hooksy's got his op over towards the B bomb site. That jump shows that Nitro wanted to be a bit more aggressive. Now he's got a Mac 10, so he was hoping he could lead the way in clean with pace and with speed, but utility stops him in his tracks. A lot of shuffling around in the hallway. How do you get yourself back into the round? Four versus five. Got some utility at the very least. And you've got OC still in place, so maybe just throw him in and try and look for the opening. Ooh, this is everything. JKS with aggression, finds the MAC-10, finds the bomb, and is going to back away. But OC's going to step forward, and the Flames will find that kill. Down to about half HP. That's a really smart play from OC. And also from, from JKS, he actually he saw it coming. Instead of swinging for a second fight, he's like, no, let me just control this bomb and slow them down. So he did the right thing, just... OC's heading back to the B bomb site. I don't know if Nico can hear that footsteps, but he's activated Yekandar to find one more kill. This could get dicey. Now you have Hunter all alone with no reinforcements at the B bomb site, and he's got to hold his nerve. Bailing out towards market, Liquid might find the opening. OC's got to hustle up. There's 16 seconds on the clock, and Alish has control of the B site. Yes, he does. They should not be winning this round at all, Liquid. I feel like they should have already lost it. Nine seconds OC's now. Down. Oh, no. yes, he it's is. It would be done. The bomb, he can't get it back. That is a sad way to lose the round, but that was the one kill that mattered. What a strange victory. That was, that was I think, the only win condition for yeah. G2 in this round was really Hunter finding that kill as OC crossed in. What a brutal way to lose it. That desperate jump from Elise as well. They're like, is the bomb up there? Yeah, yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, six to five. Two ends. SMGs, a UMP, a FAMAS. This is going to be a rough one. It's a rare sight for UMP these days. Yeah, it really is. Rifles in the hands of Nico and Hunter, and they've been uh, very proactive in middle throughout this half. And senses it, sets up his own flashbang, but he is peeking against two players. That's. I appreciate the courage on that one, but that would have been an almost impossible fight, even if you won one of them. Yeah, almost at, certainly traded. At best, that was going to be a one for one. Yekandar, with knowledge that two players were pushed up in halls, he's going to say, you don't really have the manpower, the resources to have too staunch of a defense in middle, so I'm going to take some space. Nice thing for G2 is that actually gets rid of the UMP. Monacy's able to trade out to the AK-47. Tough break when you're playing so much of a solo position if you're NAF that you actually have to flash for yourself. You know, like that's not always easy to do. Well, and, you know, ooh, what a find. Oh, that one, JKS wants it back. Oh, OC, not scoped in. Shots faded out. Nico's going to clean up that kill. Does he want to go for a leash as well? Flashbang. He's going to peek with it. Surely, and he does. Second kill for Nico, and the bomb is dropped again. That's what we're talking about. We mentioned it earlier with Nico having an impact on the game, and that one was massive. And the way that he played it, absolutely expertly. Not peeking into the AWP, but fading out the shot instead. Modesty is going to get that one, and Yekindai can't save the round this time. Nicely done. G2 not surrendering quite so soon. Looked like they were going to get swiped out in this uh, first half. Looked like they are going to get wiped off the board, but they're back in the mix. Yeah, good to see some fighting him here in this round. This is wonderful. Yeah, Nico does a great job in middle, obviously. Damage onto OC puts him in an impossible situation, baits out the shot, and then the cleanup onto Elige, committing to the fight, knowing he's going to be blind. Tough fight for Elige. Good double kill from Nico. And still a really... I mean, if G2 win the next three rounds here, it's 9-6. It's such an open game, so they have a lot still to fight for. 
in they, the best of one. And they've got a chance, although there's a losing bonus, a two-round losing bonus built up for Team Liquid, but they're out of money after this buy, so the next round you'd get to breathe a little bit easier with G2 where it'd be kind of upgraded pistols, maybe some MAC-10s and armor. Nitro again looking to lead the way with the Tech-9, use that mobility to really cause some chaos in this B defense. Well, Nitro is ready for it. Be running straight in there. Molotov out, makes the jump down, but Hunter is there on the crossfire. It even flashed. He gets the kill on Liege. That's a great way to get things stopped. Two kills going the way of G2 and a three on five now. Started to rotate a lot more people this way, so already seeing the gun barrel there. Hunter calling it, and he definitely knows what's happening. Oh, but OC, you have to be so quick to shut him down. Could we have another one, please? That was a great hook see, though, right underneath them. And OC is going to be found as well. Bullet to the face. Once again, Yakinda trying to see if he can save the day, but this seems like one of the more unwinnable clutches. He's got time. That's the one thing. And uh, Monacy's played this pretty passively, so he's got to be cautious. JKS is now just arriving over to market, so Yekindar might be able to find an awkward timing. But Monacy's clearing out the site. Now he's got a deep angle towards hulls. And yeah, now in position to where this should be impossible, but maybe not. Come on! How does he hit the shot? He's made his way past 20 seconds. He almost had it. That is real close. JKS there to clean it up in the market. That's important, but man. How does he even get close to winning that round? That's the second time he's just completely annihilated Monacy holding an angle at this bomb. So remember previously it was towards Catwalk. This time it's towards the back of the bomb site. Absolutely disgusting. But once again on this B hit, Hunter with a critical double kill to slow things down and take the main thrust of danger out of the hit from Team Liquid. Yeah, the money is not great. Yekindar in that AK-47 in the 14th round. Hard to even really blame because look at what you get for it. Instant shutdown. Nico thought he was going to go take that fight. He's not absolutely ready. And the defense has shifted over to Connector. The, the A site once again is, is wide open. JKS over the smoke gets one. One for one trade. Yekindar again with impact. But this is where Monacy's got to have a big performance. A nice double kill with the AWP. Yeah, that'll really slow it down. They have rifles in the middle, but no one can really get to them either. Another find for Monacy. It's a great triple. Levi Yekindar in another one versus three clutch this time to try and see if he can end it. But Hunter will take him down. And G2, they're right back on top. This is such an exciting first half. I love it. Yeah, respectable attempt from Yekindar and Team Liquid as well. That's the Hero AK-47 that provides you two opening kills and almost gives you an avenue into the bomb site. Good shutdown from Monacy to close that gap in the defense. Two-round lead. Final round of the first half. Again, the confidence, though, on someone like Yekindar to, to take the final middle is just... It's impressive. Wanna, wanna feel what it's like to play the game with just knowing I'm gonna I'm just gonna run in here and take this fight and just win it. And then do it. Can say the words, but Yeah. The action is different. <laughs> just, just toying with him. Oh man, that is great. Nitro getting the kill. Very frustrating when you're an old player like that. You feel like, alright, I've already been exposed. And that's a play that, that had no plan B to it. That's Monacy, drop in, see what you find. No flashbang, no smoke to kind of give him some cover to try and make any kind of an escape whatsoever. No support in middle to guard his back. Who wants to plan for failure, Jason, you know? True. The plan coach, probably. <laughs> We're planning to win this. <laughs> Jumping shot missed. Nitro looks like he wants to pick up the pressure. They've had some difficulty getting out, but at least this time it's only Hooksy here. It's only the one player. Hunter's been pulled off. He's got a long route to come for support, so it's all on the new in-game leader for G2. Yep, and a pretty good job he's doing as well. Huge double. This time he did not have the MP9. M4A1 treating him a little bit better. Hunter's going to go down to Naf, and somehow in the middle of all of this, Nico did actually get a shot for the smoke all the way from the A-bomb side onto Catwalk, so that's why one of them is uh, dead and why it's a 2-on-3 here, but it's another bomb plant. 15th round, going to be settled in a retake now. JKS and Nico. And Nico has been playing a great first half, and so is JKS. Only two kills between them at the moment. That is actually wild to imagine. Elige on the one side, Naf a little bit deeper in the bomb side, and he's not ready for it. It looks like he's oh. about to die. Oh, switching out the gun. I'm shocked that Elige doesn't even realize, and now Naf, he's really boxed in, cornered back here. Bullets are already coming through. He's been tagged up. He is one spam away from death. 
And it'll be Nico to find it. What? <laughs> they don't oh, have they don't it. Kit. Oh, they didn't have it just in time either. I don't think this is going to be it. Classic it'll be G2. Liquid instead. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, devastating, Jason. Yeah, devastating. What a good half from both teams, though. We're neck and neck. We're headed to a break. When we come back, we're going to get the conclusion. Split right down the middle. Eight to seven. Slightly in favor of G2 going into the second half. Yeah, that, that was actually a really awesome first half. I, I really enjoyed that. Both teams brought brought some awesome stuff to the table. Oh, and this might be a fiery start. Yeah, it, it's, it certainly will be. Kind of a G2 just running the Liquid Pistol around as well. We'll see who does it better. At least Liquid have some players close by in position to provide a little bit more support. Are they going to wait for the smokes? I feel like they're going so quick. I'm not even sure the smokes are going to go in down. Jumping in. Flashes are there. OC will pick up the one headshot there. Hooksy's out of the round. The Hunter, a little bit of a return. Monacy, nice opening so far. Yekindai in a little bit of trouble, and he's going to get run down. They just pick up the USPs immediately and keep fighting. Elise risking his life to try and get his team back into it. If he gets caught there, the round is definitely over. But the fact that they got the kill means maybe, maybe it's doable. Nitro, Ooh. there's a headshot, and... He had a chance there. JKS eventually will find his head. No bomb plant yet. And Nitro in a one versus two. Nitro just trying to get some of those jiggle shots on this P250. A dangerous game. Trying to find an avenue out of the window, out of the market. Bomb has shifted over in the hands of Nico to the bench. So it's not in danger of being planted. So Nitro may not realize it, but this he can be patient here. He's probably really confused about the fact that there is no bomb plant yet at all. So 35 seconds. Let's see. JKS is the one on low health, so Nico could maybe take the fight to him, but it's a long time to be waiting still. 25 seconds, and he's going to spot out Nico. Maybe that'll confirm, confirm it for him. Maybe he's thinking, all right, maybe that's why they didn't plant yet. They can just throw it over if they really don't want to cross, but finally going to be able to. Nitro with a good headshot. He's already got the double. He needs one more bullet. Nico almost dead. I can't believe it. I thought for sure Nitro would have had that one, but Nico... Oh, man, able to bring it back. G2 slowing it down in that 2v1 and trying to find a way to double peek onto Nitro. And that almost was kind of their undoing, right? It gave Nitro some chances because they couldn't actually find the choke point to double peek into. Gave Nitro a couple of 1v1s. And yeah, it got to be heartbreaking for Nitro at the end. One bullet away from victory. Both pistols now going to G2. And that's... Good boost of momentum to start the second half with. Nine to seven at the moment, and the 17th round is coming up. And Nico, 17 and seven. I mean, I we probably shouldn't be surprised. This is almost every game that he's in, but it's still so crazy. It's so crazy to me how you can keep doing it, for not just for like a month or two, but for years, it feels like. And still... Yeah, can I match on the other side with 17 of his own? Yeah, he's one of those few players that's been able to keep it up across the span of, I mean, you said years, what, it's got to be six years now, essentially. Seven yeah. years, perhaps. Nico challenging, taking a tag from the Deagle, throwing a weak EU nade. <laughs> Trying to change the meta, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be a long struggle, Jason. I'm not going to lie, but I appreciate the effort. I'll take the battle. Woo! Some NA Deagling coming in here. Careful now, G2, with this kind of slow crawly style. They've been finding some isolated duels. Hooksy's picked off with no chance at a rebuttal. Good response from Monacy to even things up in a four on four. Still, G2 have not aggressed towards a bomb site quite yet. Under 40 seconds in the round two. So eventually gonna make up your minds here, and it looks like they're gonna try and split that A bomb site. JKS. Top connector, powerful position to be in. Nitro up close with the Deagle. He pretty much has to get at least one of these kills for this even to be possible. And I think failing that, it's just not going to be good enough. Nice spray. And the fact that they set it up with a flash to make sure that OC couldn't really find a good, clean shot with a scalp. Just overall, good basics, good mechanics coming out from the side of G2. Yeah, great control with the spray on the Galil at long range as well. We frequently see that gun get away from even the pros. Nicely done from Nico. 10 to 7 will be the scoreline when all is said and done. And for Elise and Naf, you're just looking for some exit kills, a weapon, a rifle right at the end of the round. Elise would love a partying kill on someone here, but I'm sure they're going to give it to him. Well, let's see. Oh, he's, he's thinking about it at least. Sensed somehow. Oh, <laughs> he wanted to do the trick. But couldn't. Even if he pulled it off, he's, uh, he's got Nico and CT spawn waiting for him. So I think Elise was going to likely go down no matter what. Nap will survive. The only Deagle, the only armor. Into the next round for Team Liquid. Ooh, the double. 
The double I fought. Trap. That's a new tactic. Do you think you feel, you know, like when a player doesn't realize you're going for a high five and he just leaves you hanging, how awkward that can be? Do you think it's more awkward if, like, Nico moves his hand after the first one? Yeah, for sure. Like, what if you don't know what's coming? What if you don't know if it's, like, the single hard high five or the softer double high five? And the second one just disappears into the air and yeah. it's like, oh. That's got to be its own level oh. of, of watch people die inside. Eventually, when I try my luck at coaching, I'm gonna try, we're going to practice high fives with my team. That's actually all we're going to be doing. Okay. Um, that is the trend of, of talent making awful decisions of heading off to coach. You're next in line. You say awful, but <laughs> I think it can work. Like, you got high five so sharp, the enemy team could hear it. Like, through the headsets and everything. They're going to be listening to the game like, ooh, is that a whip that went off somewhere? Is that? Are they high fiving yeah. <laughs> Wow, I bet Anders is coaching that team. Look at the high fives. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not the most important class. Branding is going to be incredible. Sure. Yeah, All right, here we go. First gun round of the second half. Got to crank things up a bit. Op in the hands of OC, M4s across the board for Team Liquid. Nice steady start here. Four round gap. And Liquid. I still think look very impressive on the T side. No guarantee that'll translate into the CT side here. And especially early on when they just have their first rifle buy, this is where you really want to see a quick return to the game, because if you lose track of it here, you almost don't have that many chances. And this best of one format to start with is pretty brutal. Nico playing the hallway, OC on the other side. A lot of attention now being pulled down towards connector and middle. Nitro opening up and actually winning the fight against Hunter. That's a great start. Yeah, but the pinch towards the A-bomb set is coming. All three players, all three defenders for Team Liquid are top con, are jungle. It doesn't matter, though, because Liquid has cleared out the other side of the map. All that's left is this single prong coming in. Liquid can all turn their gaze into this direction. OC holding the line is picked off by Monacy. Huge kill to find. Alige with the response, and now they're going to passive or play it passive behind the smoke. They'll give up the site, give up the plant, and play for the retake. And there's already a flank coming in. So lightning fast. So even if they get the bomb plant here, I don't know how they can possibly make it out. Elish going to get that kill, and that's easy. But even if it wasn't that, it would have been one of the three or four other people there. So that's a great way to get this done. Just, as you said, eliminating the mid part of that attack, and then they were pretty much home safe. Yeah. Well done from Team Liquid. Nice opening kill by Nitro over the top of the smoke, over the top of the box, and Yekandar adding in with a nice headshot onto Hooksy. And that's the mid portion cleared. And from there, everything's a little bit easier. 11 to 8. G2 with a three round lead. They really, really badly needed that round. And they get out of it with quite a few rifles alive, so it starts, starts the money rolling a little bit on the liquid side at the very least. 20th round here. Monacy on that AWP. That last round was tough. I mean, he got one of those important kills near the connector, but then there were, I think there were almost no more targets after that. He just he, There was smokes and flash. He couldn't see anything, so. Yeah. Not much more he could find. Hooksy at top mid. Hunter in support. Molotov's a little bit early. Drops into the smoke and is extinguished immediately, so a little piece of utility that goes to waste. Hunter's still going to push up behind it, though. Confidence that nobody's going to be peeking the window. Oh, what a play from Naf. <laughs> He's been bored out there. The life of the B-bomb side anchor, just not even sure of what's happening. Finally going to go and check it out. And this is really good. Hunter surely never going to expect this to come. 45 seconds, and he's going to turn the corner. Ooh, a little bit slow, so at least he's going to have a second more to live, but they still have a lot of defense over at A. And Naf doesn't want to push too early and get and get picked off by someone in middle. He's just in position to stop things. Look at Hooksy as well going towards the B bomb site. I, this is going to be a flank. I don't think there's not enough time to pull them back. There's 27 seconds on the clock, and if he does, Hunter is surely going to go down. Hunter might die anyways. Elise is going to have that pick. Once again, Liquid being the proactive one. This is a long period of silence for G2. 
They need that bomb plant for Hooksy to even have a role in this round. And they need it right now. 10 seconds on the clock. They need to storm the bomb site, and they're just going to get wiped out. That they they probably were waiting for Hooksy to do something, but then they lose that mid player, and it's it's all done. Hunter that, goes down. That felt way too long for G2 to be in position to attack and not actually pulling the trigger on it. And then at a certain point, Liquid's just going to be like, okay, we're just going to come find what's going on. And certainly with that clock running down, you can see as soon as Liquid realizes the play towards the eight bomb site, it's not about play this smart. It's not about grab an angle. It's not about be passive. Everyone get aggressive because if they have to spend like five, six, seven seconds actually fighting us and trying to trade us, that's going to chew all the time off the clock to begin with. So that G2 offense falling flat. Another double high five. Maybe they just, maybe they just have it down. But this time at an awkward angle, you know. Southpaw. Yeah. Stuff to work on, but not, maybe not the most important thing right now. Actual real stuff happening in the server. It's important to know as well. A round like that looks silly, but I mean, obviously, we see it all the time with teams that bring in new in game leaders. There are rounds that are going to get away from you like that as you sure. kind of get acclimated to, I mean, obviously, a new in game leader and then also a new player in JKS. And I mean, if that A defense is a little bit further back and instead of Hunter going down, they kind of get an opening in a bomb plant, then Hooksy's position is insane. Uh, so there are There are ways to make it work, but. Yeah, it just felt too late in the round. Obviously, maybe it, maybe it's different if Naf is actually at the B-bomb site, but with his positioning pushed up, that was always going to go that way. Good kill from Naf, not bored anymore. Looking for a second, and he's going to reposition. With a teammate coming in as well. It's looking very, very good for this uh, B-defense at the moment. You're up on there already with a nade. Now the smoke on top to really slow them down. G2 kind of left. No man's land at the moment. That's the AK-47 hitting the deck one more time. Hunter's going to go pick that up. 40 seconds on the clock. There's no utility. All you're looking for at the moment is dry fights. And Elise is in an impossible position to clear. Yeah, truly. JK is going to take a swing at it, but that doesn't really get a better result. So now for the double, Elise with a double, and Hunter is on his own. That AK... It's not been doing anyone any favors so far. And you can double survive as well. So it's a flawless round for Liquid. And the, yeah, the return is, again, pretty swift here in the second half. Pretty swift and, and pretty convincing. Uh, you mentioned it, what, two two rounds ago, three rounds ago on their first win, had a lot of players surviving. This is now three rounds in a row where I think they've only lost one, maybe two players across all three of those rounds. So they rich. They've got it going on. Yeah, it's true. Almost 9,000 on NAF. That's pretty impressive. And we're nearly tied up. 11 to 10 right here. Liquid one round away. And G2, they need some of that magic back. Ooh, great read from OC. He saw it coming, maybe heard it too. Hooksy's going to be out of it. Yeah, Hooksy just missed the timing. A little bit late for that kind of a play. Picked off early, no chance of a trade for the G2 side of things. Now, don't get too worried if you're a G2 fan. Remember, the first half started out this way as well. I think G2 rattled off a 4 to nothing lead, looking solid, looking clean, and Liquid came storming back into it. So plenty of opportunity for G2 to kind of find the solution for the problem. The real issue isn't necessarily finding a round win. It's finding multiple, considering the economy and the money that's built up on Team Liquid. But then again, playing on the T side, you would almost assume that this is where you could also send someone like Nico to do even more work, even though he's already been, you know, he's already been putting in uh, some great hours, but maybe you could rely on him to open up some of these rounds just a little bit more. 45 seconds at the moment. Every single member of G2 is in the middle, which, yeah, if they can crack it open, but look at how they're escaping down that A ramp. So even if you get up the middle now, how are you going to check for both Nitro and Elige? If you, there's just so much time being spent just gaining map control. Uh, this just makes me a little bit nervous because not a whole lot of pressure on the map until very late in the round. Not a whole lot of pressure on the Liquid defense. 20 seconds and they still haven't found any contact. Elige with the off angle and Cubby gets dropped. OC picks off the bomb. That's JKS making the run. Nap on catwalk holds and we're in a two on two. I can't believe they actually find Nitro on the follow-up there. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, Kina goes down. Hunter wins the fight. He probably should have been dead. And now Naf real far away. That is almost inexplicable how they managed to pick that one up. That should probably never have been a G2 round. That's a huge win for Hunter off the bomb plant, sliding into the Yekandar angle. Yekandar didn't know who he was planning, or he probably would have challenged for that kind of a fight. Here's JKS finding the opening, an all-important critical high-impact kill, even when he goes down afterwards. This is the follow-up from Hunter. 
We're extending this lead to 12-10 now. So G2 found a victory here. I really, I really thought that probably Nitro won the follow-up. Once they clear out a Legion sandwich, they assume that that's it. But Hunter was so ready for it. So Nitro had no chance to do anything in the round. That was also a little bit interesting. Timeout called. Coach is going to get involved in the act. He too tried to pull it off a number of times. And then Yekendar did a pretty good job of shutting that down on multiple different occasions. Let's see. OC setting up in the window, but it smoked off so quick. Elish taking the fight and looked like he should have won it. Hunter was flashed and not really ready for it. Nico's still going to be going down, though. So it's an even trade, and with a good nade uh -oh. here, maybe Hunter is dead. It's going to bounce right off the back and blow him up. That's a great accuracy. Yeah, cleaning up Elysia's kill. Those two, Elysia and Yekandar, go two for one in middle. B bomb site under attack. Naf's on catwalk. OC just moving out of market right now. Attention is towards the op. Naf can hold the line, but OC's quick. Swings out for another fight. Two kills for him in the bomb site, and there goes Monacy. Yekandar grabs his third. Nicely done, getting a lot of people on that bomb site pretty quickly, and because OC is such an active AWP player, it's I don't think it's shocking to see him not just sort of defend the bomb site, but actually pushing forward after each peak and, and getting even more out of it. That's what, like 25 kills now on Yekendar, I think? So he's, he's doing the work. And Liquid, after losing a round, they, they bounce right back. There, there's a reason why we were so excited for him joining this team. And I think, you know, in his first event with Team Liquid at Cologne, it was more the strategic updating and the refreshed look of Team Liquid tactically and then kind of the concepts and kind of taking over the team energy and emotion uh, was the big conversation. And now, obviously, with more time and more comfort in the team, I think we'll start seeing Yekandar putting up, you know, higher volume of frags throughout these games. So the round where they don't lose a single player. So yeah, I mean that that's uh, that's horrifying to think about because even the tactical side of it is obviously has already transformed Liquid in a big way. But now Yekanda is actually putting on some crazy numbers, leaving G2 in a weird way of thinking about the game. Stylistically, yeah. yeah, certainly not in terms of impact, certainly not probably in terms of the level that he could in-game lead at, but certainly you know the base philosophy that you think of. Also hard to know when Nico says, is it a compliment or a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's a compliment. I would guarantee it's a compliment. Let's not go down that road. I'm just stirring the pot. Yeah, you really are. You're stirring the pot and putting a tinfoil hat on all at the same time. Well. Big ol' spoon. 12-12. G2 need something to be happy about. That's not it. JKS picked off trying to chuck out a Molotov. Towards the B bomb site we go, and this is a perfect timing for it. There's no defense here. OC's on his hustle back. He's low HP. He might catch a player walking across. Modesty trying to be quiet. And <laughs> OC's still just... It's so crazy with the aggression, you know. She pointed out already low on health, so maybe at that point in time you wouldn't normally... Oh, that's unfortunate. Nico finding it, but maybe normally if you're OC, you're like, I already got two kills. Let me just chill out for a minute, but he's still just running into the bomb site anyway. I think, I mean, he had to he had to make the play. He was the only one really coming over that sec could secure the bomb site. Naf was going to be on catwalk, which you can't really hold onto this site. You can maybe grab your one kill on the crossover. So OC was the only one really in position with that AWP. Liquid's about to take a one round lead. And also sh shut down the money on the G2 side. Unless somehow Nico get a bomb plant here, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Oh, Swinging for it, but Crosshair in the wrong position. And it will be Liquid with that one round lead. Three people surviving. Stress started the build on G2. Yeah, still money growing for Team Liquid. Good shot from OC. And that's going to be another thing to keep your eye on with Team Liquid. Don't don't lose sight of OC's development as a player and as an opper with the addition of Yekinor and all the conversation that's going to be in that direction. Obviously, OC, I think, very early returns, already kind of being propped up to be the next great North American opper. He'll be the second one. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Pretty much uh, not even anyone near what OC's doing right now in the region. Yeah, but uh, I mean, certainly the potential and, and the desire and... The feeling is there that he's even going to be able to eclipse Skadoodle as the best North American opera of all time. And not quite there yet, but the signs are there. Yeah, I would say so. It's also kind of hard to match those two up just in terms of like how they play at different times, you know? So it's going to be a hard one to do. Look at this, though. He's showing us a little bit of a highlight reel for the round. Getting a good couple of kills, and they're going to be able to clean it up. No problem. Eventually, surely, they'll find Nico inside of the smoke. 
And it's a two-round lead, 14 to 12. Yeah, Liquid looking composed and looking confident now. Timeout taken again. Getting down to crown on the corner that you just can't see. Yeah. That's a classic. <laughs> right. I agree. It does look like they... Yeah, they, they found the formula and, and are just applying it at the moment, so... More power to them. 27th round, though. No smoke in the window, so OC still not feeling that confident. And Leash, though, not lacking in confidence. Gonna be able to pick up the kill, and even after that, I'm shocked that Monacy is actually expecting this. Is he gonna be quick enough? Elise is so deep down there. Monacy goes down, and as they try and recover the orb, they could have probably lost it now. Naf is pushing. So much aggression on the Liquid side, and G2 even looked like JTS was actually thinking about it, but they're still just not ready. It's actually so cool. Just so many pushes all across the map. So much attention for G2 pointed towards middle because Yekandar is being aggressive, Elise is being aggressive, and they never even knew that Naf was pushing up yet again. That's two huge pushes out of the B-bomb state through those B-halls for Naf in this game that have had massive consequences in the second half. And I mean, more than that, out of the timeout as well, remember, the fourth timeout yeah. taken from G2, you're coming into it with a plan, you're coming into something you want to exploit, and you get a completely different look of Team Liquid thrown at you. Just 40 seconds. Nico's alive and Hooksy's here, but Hooksy's been having a little bit of trouble finding some of the frags that are relevant. This Ooh. time, they're going to have to rely on him to do a lot if they want a chance of winning this one. Oh, see, oh, the timing could not have been worse. Almost a free kill there for Hooksy, but got to be real careful. Nitro is seeing it. He's got the right read, and say, just stay alive, Nitro. Naf is showing up now, in connected with an M4, and the time is running down here really quickly. 17 seconds now. The bomb is behind them still. That's on Nico being brought up the ramp. Nice shot from Naf, and now Nico is in a world of trouble. 10 seconds, and he's going to get crossfired out of the round. 15 on the board of Liquid. Yeah. Yeah, Nico had to find a kill there. He had to find a 1v1 to get that bomb planted safely to put some pressure on the other defender. So he had to go for a fight instead of a plant because there's no way you're getting out of it after the bomb goes down. Aggression is the name of the game in this round for Team Liquid. Yekandar pushing, Elise pushing, OC in support of those two, and Naf lurking on the CT side up along the B-halls. I feel like whenever people hate on Mirage, it's because they don't get to see games like these, where you actually do have a lot of the cool stuff that can happen on the CT side. Uh, which I realize some, some teams are very hard to do this against, but... I feel like the people who hate Mirage are... Uh, you know, let's go not on. go down this road. I was going to say, like, mostly, like, puggers and matchmakers, although I do know a lot of pro players aren't the biggest fans of Mirage as well, but... It's just... It's taking the place of Dust2. Hold the phone, because Liquid might win here. They're on fire again, five in a row. Elise traded off in one for one. Yeah, that was a hell of a shot. He needs more, and he will get it as well. Nico with a huge follow-up. Make it a double. And the bomb is being planted. Three versus three. Spam not doing enough. Grenade not going to kill anyone at the very least, but it does some good damage on the JKS. And they're going to regroup a little bit here. Three on three for the after plant. Yakinda's already taken down Nico. Bomb is not that far ticked, so they have some time to work with. Naf gonna swing for it here in JKS. That earlier grenade really softened him up, and that is it. What a great three versus three retake. And Liquid taking down G2. Yeah, this is a great look for